Welcome bird to this planet and he's immediately sleeping. Well, of course he is. Hello to all the memes and bubbles and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included. Let's play. In the last episode, we built this petroleum boiler, this very nice rocket interior, as well as this temperature control unit so we can grow the thimble reed in a controlled environment so we can repair our atmosphere. But since I'm not the smartest, I forgot to turn off the tepidizer and everything heated up to a degree where the thimble reed can't grow, as you can see here. So we have to take care of that too today. We will be fixing everything that comes our way, but the end goal will be to finally land on another planetoid. Today I want to start out by addressing some comments from the comment section. For example, about this rocket, we don't really need a large liquid fuel tank because we can already store liquid fuel inside of our engine, 450 kilograms to be exact. A second thing that was noted, that we will be needing oxidizer so we can change out our large liquid fuel tank for exactly that. Small solid oxidizer tank, there it is. Let's build it out of gold amalgam, switch it out. Then we have space here left, so we can place down a module like either the rover or the trailblazer module. Make that out of iron and keep on going. As the safer users may have already noticed, I switched a couple of things in the base to make it more foolproof. So we are five or seven cycles ahead. As you can see here, our water storage was running low, so we had no oxygen production. That's why I hooked up the polluted water pipe to a simple water sieve that feeds on water to our sorting pipe right here into the infinite storages, where it gets sucked up and transported back into the spawn. I also added a simple mechanical filter to the output that comes from Uzista bringing over the crude oil, so we can 100% be sure that only the crude oil is fed down to our petroleum boiler. Our oxygen is getting too hot, as you can see here, because this here is not cooling down anymore. The reason for that is, in our pipe spaghetti, I placed on two bridges in the same direction. I don't know when this happened, because this was correct before. There we go. To speed up the process, I could place on some temp shift plates made out of ice. So the highest priority for now is the thermal reed, because almost all of our atmos suits are pretty worn out and will break soon. So the dupes will no longer have access to this part of the base, which is important to get down into our petroleum boiler area or upwards towards the rocket. And we need to place down a pipe that is very long going down all the way to the petroleum boiler. So the dupes will be in atmos suits a lot. That is why at the moment I will get rid of all the atmos suits here. So the dupes will have access to this area without an atmos suit. But I'm gonna deconstruct the rock crushers first and place the atmos suits right there. I got rid of the statue and the hanging pot and placed down the rock crushers as well as two new marble blocks that Mima can work on. So after the dupes have finished this or just right now, we can take the atmos suit docks and place them over here. Like so. Now we just need an entrance like that and hook it up to the grid. I'm gonna use the same cable that we had before. Yeah, made out of iron, connect it up, disconnect this. We don't need that anymore and we can deconstruct that. Then we can keep on going with the granite floor, hook up the power and deconstruct all the cables that we don't need from our old atmosphere docks. Let's not deconstruct that for now. For the atmosphere docks, we will also need an oxygen supply. So let's hook that up to our old piping and deconstruct everything that we don't need anymore. Now that the duplicates place down the entrance, we can get rid of the old entrance. This should speed up the process very dramatically. Okay, the dupes are almost finished and I forgot about this entrance. That's because I wanted to close this off anyways. So let's do that. I want to close this off right here, deconstruct that tile, also open the door, place the transit tube crossing one more to the left, the insulation as well, and then deconstruct the liquid reservoir and place down another transit tube access point right here. So the dupes will have access to this without a suit. We can also hook this room up to our oxygen grid after we empty out those hydrogen pipes. Now we can deliver the suits to those places here and then set the atmosphere suit checkpoint to clearance vacancy. Two dupes are scolding because yeah, Harold, not the smartest idea. Just get out of there. And who's the second dupe? Stinky. Stinky. Same thing. Let's check what is printed. A couple of nutrient bars. Maybe we can put that in the rocket. I quickly changed up the entrance here so the duplicates can go in without an atmosphere and easily out if there is power. I also hooked up 
the oxygen as you can see here so we have the oxygen fed to this tiny room and now it is a little bit over pressured but that should be fine we still have to cool it down though i also want to move our exosuit forge that is right here at the moment to here over at Ozista, our Atmos suits still have enough durability left to explore the oil biome a little bit more and dig up more of that precious fossil. If you're wondering where all this water is coming from, as you can see down here, I placed on some temp shift plates made out of ice in there to cool this down a little bit and make this quicker. And the dupes just swab up everything that lands on top. Then we can dump it in our water storage room right here. Now that we have taken care of those minor things, we can get to our petroleum boiler and change up a few things. Because sooner or later, those tiles here might break because we are only feeding in 3 kilograms of crude oil instead of the 10 that it is designed to handle. Therefore, I need to drastically reduce the heat that is stored in those diamond tiles right there. I am going to do that by deconstructing a part of the diamond spike as well as the steel tiles, replace the diamond tiles with gold tiles and a temp shift plate with a gold temp shift plate. The door will be deconstructed and reconstructed and a temp shift plate behind the diamond spike needs to go. The reason for that is if I want to close the door the heat would be transferred and we don't want that at the moment so we have to deconstruct the stuff first. In case you were wondering why the footage was a little bit all over the place, I was talking for around 10 minutes until I noticed I'm making this way more complicated than it needs to be, so I'm just showing you the result of how this has been changed up. The diamond spike now ends in a single tile and not in the L formation. The steel door directly feeds into two gold tiles and the gold tiles feed with a temp shift plate made out of gold into the heat chamber. Now we can activate that thing again. The crude oil is flowing towards our heat chamber, dropping down. I set this to 402 degrees. The heat gets pressed into the heat chamber and it only heats up to 402 or 403, which is amazing. This works way better than before. And like it is now, it should prevent the overheating that we had previously. Let's check out what is printed. We got a Pokeshell spawn. Let's print that on Uzista. Welcome to the base, Pokeshell. In order to make the transportation from the materials from Ozista to this planetoid a little bit easier, I'm connecting up a very long version of the conveyor rail right here, right through our infinite storages. That's why I'm deconstructing the wall right there. Up to our infinite one tile storage right here. <laughs> Look at this. Guys, I figured out where my barbecue went. The ration box here has 78 kilograms of barbecue, which is quite high for this little planetoid. The problem was that on our main planetoid, I forgot to set the ration box back to uh, where the edible deactivate barbecue. It was constantly set to barbecue 5 kilograms. And since the order sweeper was activated, it was picking up the barbecue, placing it in the conveyor loader, and the conveyor loader was shipping it over to the other planetoid. The dupes were so nice to store our barbecue, so it is not all stale, but the freshness is going down because it is not at minus 22, but only at minus 21 degrees Celsius, which is super annoying. All of our food, 300 thousand calories are on the wrong planetoid and I'm not sure if I can send it back because it will end up right here. So maybe we connect that up first, deconstruct the conveyor chute and maybe it will end up in our storage right here, get picked up by the order sweeper, placed in one of the conveyor loaders, it will pick it up, send it over into our storage. Exactly. That should do the trick but it is not the lower one but the upper one. Okay. So this one, this one is set to barbecue. Okay, this should be fine. So let's send this over. But first deconstruct this. Then we go to Uzista and send over all of the barbecue for once. Can we set this to edible? Exactly, barbecue, top priority. Back at the main planetoid, there's our barbecue being sent over. Hopefully it stays fresh for as long as it needs to get into our infinite storages. Transport it upwards. Now it should be picked up, put in here. There's our barbecue. And now it will either get stored in this infinite storage or sent upwards. It is being sent upwards. Let's see how fresh this still is. We will see when it ends up in our storage. There are the other two pieces of barbecue, by the way. Oh, 
At the moment we are at 466,000 calories. Let's see when this drops down. 469,000 calories. So the barbecue arrived right here somewhere. This barbecue. It is stale, but now it is deep frozen in a sterile atmosphere. So it worked what we were trying to do. I was super annoyed that this still wasn't working as I intended because the room here was so hot it was taking ages to cool down. That's why I drained all of the polluted water, swept it up, it was a giant mess and took forever. Then I replaced it with temp shift plates made out of ice. As you can see, this is only seven degrees and this is still too hot. So I placed on two more aquid units. I know this is totally overpower and probably uh, absolute overkill. Don't ever do this in your base, but I have enough energy to do that. And I want to finally cool this down. This is annoying me so much. You can't believe it. I hooked this up like this. The sensor here is set to 24. That means if the water is above 24 it would will get cooled down by all three aqua tuners but if it is below 24 it will just get sent over at the moment this needs to even out that's why we have these pockets of 49 degrees right here and we have what the heck gold amalgam yeah sure i built it out of steel 100 percent because i copied that one over and the steel is lying right here so this is this is just ridiculous dupes okay i deconstructed that again thermo equatuna out of steel press b to copy this is steel i press steel again place it down don't you freaking dare and build that out of anything else, dupes. I built the insulation tiles here out of ceramic because there was a liquid bridge and a liquid bridge can transfer the heat into this room and we don't want that. And steel, steel, steel. Awesome. Now it should work. Comes in at 48 degrees, goes out at 6 degrees. Maybe I need to get rid of a couple of tiles of liquid here because this is overfilled. So let's see, extract pipe content. Probably we can extract those tiles. One, two, three, four. That should be enough. Yeah, that should be fine. Now that we have most of our barbecue back, we could probably make surf and turf. That's why I placed down the gas range right here, as well as a conveyor loader and an auto sweeper, so we can connect it up to our infinite storages for the food right here. The gas for the gas range will come from Uzista, so it gets sent over from the other planetoid, gets into our pipe, that is the sorting pipe, gets stored in the infinite storages, and then sent back via this pipe here upwards to our gas range right here. Now that we more or less took care of the repair for our Atmos suits with our thimble reed right here, we can place down the very long pipe for the very long transport of the petroleum to our engine right here. So we will be needing a very long pipe for that. Let's make an insulation pipe here and then transport it over through insulation like so. Make the rest of the insulation out of sedimentary rock. No, but no, not sedimentary rock. Make it out of igneous rock like this only those need to be made out of obsidian transport it over deconstruct this and then we can place down the pipe made out of igneous rock normal pipe and run it down to our petroleum boiler or to here where we can bridge it onto that like so the rest of the petroleum that is not needed will get stored in our infinite storages like here. In order to get enough material to the other planetoid that I may be sending one or two duplicates to, I am going with the temp shift plates because they have a very high mass and we can avoid building one of those storage bins. So let me place down one out of plastic, steel, glass and ceramic. Gosman, why are you using this toilet seriously? Okay, let's go back to the temp shift plates, place it down a couple more. This one out of glass, maybe another one made out of iron, and then go back to the glass production. Here we are back at the glass production. Hopefully the cables won't burn down because this will probably strain them a little bit. And here we can see Abe producing some beautiful glass for us. <laughs> Alright, I forgot something. Because I'm sending over 3333 grams of crude oil, this one overflows slightly, so crude oil is dropped down. That's why I'm back here and increasing the valve to exactly that amount. 
Maybe I set this to a higher value first, so I can get rid of a couple of packages inside of this pipe and then I reduce it so that we have a little bit of leeway in this piping here. Let's wait for the dupes to do that. We are at four kilograms, nice. Now I'm going to wait until this is empty. Okay, and now I will reset this to the exact value that the other planetoid is producing. Look what we got delivered, free steel. Nice, as you can see, the petroleum has finally been delivered and we should have 450 kilograms of that. The solid oxidizer tank I filled up with fertilizer because we have, uh, I guess, nine tons of that. I have added a couple more temp shift plates made out of iron, gold amalgam, plastic and glass. That should be enough for our duplicant to build something on the new planetoid that he will be landing on or they will be landing on. Not sure if I'm sending over one or two duplicants at the moment. They have two atmospheres and the two atmospheres they will be dropping when they come in. So that should be enough I guess for them to, well, until they break. And while the dupes are building that, I'm going to deconstruct this plastic pipe here. Also everything that is in here can be deconstructed. Who's scolding? Ruby. Yeah, Ruby, you could have deconstructed the floor tiles first. That would have been smart. Ruby can probably go to the infirmary. By the way, I built a second infirmary because our dupes were getting scolded a lot because I was sending them down to here to get rid of the material so the magma does not flow over and touch the door. That would be very bad. I also activated our glitch pump again to refill the magma storage a little bit. Therefore, I'm deconstructing this magma so it can press down the other magma. So who are we going to send over? I think Rowan, sure, as our pilot and he only has a moral requirement of 15 and we probably need a better digger and builder so I decided on Bird but Bird has a moral need of 18 so we will need to build some recreational buildings as soon as we land probably after we take care of everything else. Look what's printing, shine nymphs. We pretty much emptied out our shine nymph supply so we could print them or the seed. I'm going with a single shine nymph for now. Also, I want the duplicants to produce their very first surf and turf, but therefore we will need the gas. So I think I need to switch on the infinite storage. Down at the infinite storages, I'm going to switch on the right one. And when that reached the gas range, I will be back. Here on Uzista, all of our Atmos suits are worn out, so we have to send them back and send new ones. The new ones I already sent over, they are laying right here, but the old ones need to be sent back. So let's go to the clothing foreign atmospheres and the priority is already at 9. The gas finally has been sent to our gas range as you can see here and Travaldo is cooking the very first surf and turf. There it is, nice. Let's see if the auto sweeper picks it up. Ah, no, because we just found out that surf and turf exists so only now we can activate it here. We probably have to do the same over there. Yeah, picking it up, putting it in the conveyor loader and it will be sent upwards. Because the dupes here have not replenished the Atmos suits yet, they have to transport them here. Thank you Joshua for doing that. They haven't had access to the oil belt. That was the reason that it overpressured. Now we could even build a second one right here and place this pump lower in our biome. So we have access to way more crude oil in the future. That could be handy. So let's connect this up just like this. Then we can let this flow to here. This will drop down and we can accumulate it around here. If this is not too hot, yeah exactly, fine. So no sour gas here. Build another steel pump. We don't have enough for that, so we have to deconstruct the pump that we already have and probably place down more liquid piping to that place, as well as power. Another point that you mentioned, because of the pip planting rules, of course the pips won't plant here. So I'm gonna get rid of all those plants that are right there. Those plants will stay, because if I remember correctly, this was, yeah, exactly a nature reserve. We can replace plants with statues. Go to the furniture, sculpting block, large sculpting block, granite, and throw in a couple of those. Maybe even the crown molding, this crown molding. So I stocked up the rocket with picket meal lies and with our surf and turf. So now it is time to put in the duplicants as well as another Atmos suit because uh, the duplicants dropping them all the time. Here we are at the rocket, change the crew, Rowan and Bird. Now they have to board that thing. There's Bird and there's Rowan. Very nice. 
quickly check the interior again. There they are. Okay, set us back to nine. Every dupe is inside. Let's go back, save the game and then launch the rocket. Here I am again, platform. Uh, no, rocket. Um, I haven't set a destination yet. Change the destination. We want to go to that planetoid. Short trip. And now we begin the sequence. Let's check the temperature. Oh, okay. Very hot. Good, I built that out of insulation. There are the dupes. So, bird. Come in. Drop the suit. Awesome. And now we can store the pickled meal again. <laughs> he puts on his suit to take it down. This one is for Bird and the other one is for Rowan. Same here, Rowan and Bird. Here we can see the rocket in action and it is flying towards Barkelos that we cannot oversee yet. But apparently it has carbon dioxide geysers, aluminum volcanoes, gold volcanoes, salt water volcanoes and natural gas geysers. What is printing? Bristleberries. Okay. Back here on Uzista I forgot to hook up the water pipe to the second oil well. I also deconstructed the pump and used the steel for this pump because we only have around 450 kilograms on this planetoid. How is our rocket coming? Bird has nothing to do because Rowan is our pilot and our researcher. That was not so smart of me, but well, it is how it is. So how far are we? They seem to be already orbiting Barkelos, so we could send down our Trailblazer module. Let's oversee the planetoid. Ah, nice. One of those crushed satellites that is highly radioactive that could be useful. It seems to be a very cold planetoid or at least the first layer is cold. Then we have arbitries and pips. Nice. And hydrogen. One of those salt water biomes probably. And whatever this shit here is. Neutronium in space. Seriously game? Before sending Bird down, he can play a little bit of the games. So his morale is a little bit higher when he is being sent down. So let's go and throw him to the ground. Selecting Bird, deploy and where will we throw him? This one would be good because of meal ice, oxygen, a little bit of light if we need it. And we can use the wood for a coal burner, not a coal burner, for this uh, wood burning machine. So maybe throw him right here. Nice. Welcome bird to this planet and he's immediately sleeping. Well, of course he is, of course. Let's do this for now. Yeah, this is nice. I like it. Bird, do you really want to sleep on the floor all the time? Okay. Now we can deconstruct the trailblazer module and we already have 400 kilograms of refined iron right here. Okay, bird, move in here. What do we need? A little bit of stuff to keep Bird alive, like the melees we have here, a bed, a toilet, and then most importantly, the rock crusher, so he can produce the refined metal that we need for a landing pad. But first, I'm gonna take care of Bird's needs. So Bird will get a bed. Let's see where we can place that down. First, let's dig a tunnel right through here, place down the bed, make it a barrack by placing down two more doors, and why not place down a pitcher pump too? By the way, the warning for combat on the top left corner is because I ordered the duplicates on Uzista to kill all the fish. So maybe we can get one or two frames back. Hey, while we are here, let's see how far they are. They are not very far. Back to Barkilos. These things, the oxyferns, produce oxygen if they have carbon dioxide. So if I place my carbon dioxide producing wood burner near it, this will help the plant. So if I place this right here, connect it up to the battery, wherever that may be, maybe just here. And then I can connect up the rock crusher. Also, he's already getting stressed, so he will probably need something to de-stress. I decided for Bert that he will get a jukebox in a recreation room. So that is what he's building right now. Right next to that, we can place down the rock crusher that is needed to produce the refined metal that we need in order to build the launch pad. Bird, no! What have you done? Bird just ripped out our oxyfern that was our only source of oxygen at the moment. Maybe we get lucky and the pips plant it again. 
Bird, why? There's another Oxyfern. Does this count as a room, by the way? Missing decor item, of course. Then we can throw down a couple of decor items from the furniture tab. After placing down the decor items for the recreational room, I gave Bird a shift for himself, then checked his skills and found out that his moral requirements are not met. So for now, I thought the easiest method to increase his morale is by placing down a park sign and create a nature reserve. Or while we are at it, maybe two. And see if that helps. I jumped a little bit ahead in time so we can see if this is actually is a nature reserve. Yes it is, even though a battery is in it at the moment. But we probably need to close off the toilet because the toilet will confuse the room classifications. As soon as the toilet is finished we will know. Nope, not a nature reserve anymore. So doors everywhere. As for the second nature reserve, the room is a little bit too big, so we need to place down a couple more doors, but that's not a problem, we have enough material for that. I think it is Bird's break time soon, and as you can see, he's eating together with a pip. Cute. Bird took a good long nap, and now our calorie count is down to zero, so maybe we need to harvest that meal ice here. And now to the most important part, we need to produce a lot of material for the rocket to land. So we need around 800 kilograms, so this is 16 gold to gold amalgam. Oxygen is getting thin, so we may have to dig up another pocket right here, or just throw down an electrolyzer, because I don't see any algae around. I decided on a place for the electrolyzer just right underneath the bed, and now we just have to hook it up to our grid. Let's also not forget about a pump. We can place that right next to that, connect it up with the same cable that we just placed down and place down some pipes. Meanwhile, what is going on in our rocket? Nothing at all. He seems to have researched everything that was reachable. Because it is probably taking a while until Bird is finished, we can send the rocket to another tile. So let's see, we have 8 tiles maximum, so we can send them to the edge right here. He can research a little bit and when Bird is finished, he can come back to Barkilos and land. Then go back to Uzista. The pipe is blocked because they haven't hooked it up here. And still not built that here. Ah, I forgot a sensor, a hydro sensor. We need to build that down there. Then connect it up and deconstruct the old one. And on the main asteroid we get a snazzy suit. Nice. The snazzy suit can be worn, come on, can be worn by Ruby. Bird is getting angry and running low on calories, so I let him dig right through here to get this hexaland plant which has 4000 calories. In this time lapse I try to get Bird to finally build the pump so he's not running low on oxygen anymore and will suffocate to death in the future, but he was a little bit uncompliant and I had to force him a lot. And here you can see me trying to get Bird to finally dig up the Hexaland plant, so we will not starve to death, but he has other priorities apparently. How much power is this drawing? 240, this is supplying 300. Mm. If those both are running, this will not be enough. Also, I forgot the cable, damn it. Bird, you got more important stuff to do. Let's make this 8. First, the cable. Okay. Now the oxygen production can start. Now this. Come on bird, I know those are mixed gases all over the place and also this is very bright and radioactive. But you will need this, trust me, otherwise you will starve. Now get the plant. Get the plant! Ah oh, okay, I don't have anything to store it right now. So let's place down the fridge, but that has not the highest priority, because Bird is so stressed he probably won't even build it anyway. And we will need a second wood burner in the future. How about we place it right underneath our existing wood burner? Let's leave Bird at this for a moment. Rowan is researching. What is he researching? Uh, this tile here. Is this important, Rowan? Really? Couldn't you research this? Back on Uzista, they finally built the hydro sensor, so we can set this to if above 500 kilograms, send over stuff. And the power is out, because this is probably drawing too much. Yeah, yeah, there's way too much on this one cable. 
Let's make this quick, connect up a couple of cables placed on another power transformer and hook it up with a small cable. Make the priorities high and wait for the dupes. Now that we are pumping over 6666 grams per second of crude oil, at the moment even more, we can go back to the main planetoid and set our boiler to another setting like so. Bird is being super stressed, he's at 100% stress and he's eating up all the resources that he needs to survive. So. Mm. If I would have known which planetoid we are landing on, I would have built a trailblazer module out of gold. Maybe I skill scrub him, so that's why I placed on the skill scrubber right here. But in order for him to use that, he, well, has to want to build that thing. So the more stuff he has to do, the less he wants to do it. Let's build it again, but one more tile to the right here. Yeah, here. So he doesn't have to dig that up and he can reach that if we get rid of those tiles. Sorry bird, but you gotta do that. Otherwise you will never be unstressed. Because the massage table can't keep up with the bird's stress production. Go and work. No breaks for you. There we go. Bird, you no longer have to work. You will be skill scrubbed. Yeah, there we go. This takes a whole cycle, so we will be back when that is done. <laughs> or we could end it right here, because we are already on the other planetoid. We made a huge mess, stressed bird. We have no resources that he can eat from. He peed all over the place, and I think this is a good point where we can end it. So we have something to take care of in the next episode. Hey, I almost forgot, because we got that new update, we have under employment, advanced research, notification systems, we now have the party line telephone. That is where the dupes can phone each other over the distance of different planetoids or they can just talk to themselves. So thank you guys for watching and I'm out.